Well, thank you very much for being part of this morning conversation today. It's all about uh, understanding depression and unemployment. How do they connect? And uh, what, are the, what is the rate of depression when it comes to unemployment? How does unemployment increase the rate of depression in the country? We have many youths who are so concerned about where they're going to next their next their where they're going to get their next source of income. That is an issue that we want to uh, you know have uh, today in studio. Being part of this conversation is uh, uh, you know what, what you do not uh, want to miss. Remember as we talk about depression, we want to find out what are the things we need to do in order to you know, uh, prevent or reduce the, the rates of, in, uh, of depression in the country, especially among the youth. I'm joined by none other than Maureen Gasheru. She is a counsellor mm -hmm. and a psychologist. Karim Sarah Maureen. Thank you so much. Thank you for finding time. Good morning. Kosalama. <laughs> you look lovely today. And uh, even as you talk about this particular conversation on depression, yeah. ensure that you engage with us on our social media handles. The hashtag is Y in the morning at Ram Maguko, and that Y254 channel is where you can find us. Remember, you can also find Maureen. Are you also, you're on social media? Yes, also, I'm right? on social media. Mm -hmm. You uh, can find me on Instagram, um, underscore Maureen, underscore Gasheru. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can also follow my uh, <laughs> my rehabilitation center yeah new health medical center mm -hmm. wonderful yes. wonderful that is uh, where you can find her on social media and yeah. also uh, how you can be able to get in touch with her remember we are coming live from the broadcasting house here in Nairobi, kenya we are also live on our website at www.kbc.co.ke for slash y254 let's get this conversation going maureen i'd like, I'd like, I'd like to, uh, first of all to start with what you do tell mm -hmm. us a bit more about yourself and the things that you engage in especially as a psychologist and, and, and counselor okay thank you so much uh, first of all for having me here you're welcome yeah it's awesome to be here I've never been on TV before oh, so. first time yes <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to I, and I say, use this word I'm happy to have initiated you into yes. the TV. it's a dream come true it's a dream come true <laughs> I know I know yeah, thank you thank you so um my name is Maureen Omboi Gashero I am from a place called Gashi in mm -hmm. Kiambu County. Mm -hmm. And well, I studied counseling psychology at the University of Nairobi just here. Wow, wow. Yes, wow. and I graduated in 2016. Mm -hmm. After that, well, I didn't start practicing uh, counseling immediately because mm -hmm. I didn't really know what, I didn't know where to get a job mm -hmm. or where to start all you're, those you're things you're trying you're, you're trekking huh? yes looking for a place to start from yes so when did you get the job did, did, you found a job after how long after graduation? i found a job after one year one year yes after okay. leaving campus i found my first job in 2018 uh -huh. yes and and if uh, uh if i get you right mm -hmm. you've you've had experience in this field yes um you know for many they <laughs> i don't know how how it was for you mm -hmm. they they say that uh, we need someone with five years five years experience <laughs> no they graduate 2016 huh? <laughs> well, i take a five years experience how how did you uh, go through that uh, uh, hurdle it was tough i had to start from scratch volunteering uh, doing internships, uh -huh. all those things. Mm. Um, and then, so, when you're doing all those things, you, you start uh, being e exposed uh -huh. to the, you know, to the field. Uh -huh. You meet people yeah. who show you where you can get jobs and all that. Mm -hmm. So that is mm -hmm. basically how I started. And um, I'm, I'm looking at uh, your line of work. You've interacted with people who are depressed, right? Mm, yeah. Uh, you know, um, what are some of the stories that you've, uh, um, you know, uh, encountered mm -hmm. along, uh, you know, the line of duty yeah. that have actually touched you? You know, there are those things that when we scale, you're, you're like, wow, <laughs> wow. You know, there yeah. are those stories that you, you, you'd hear and then they shock you. Yeah. They take you back a few steps to just think about how things are. What mm -hmm. are some of those experiences and encounters you've had f with people yeah. in this line of uh, work, counseling them, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to depression? Okay, and, um, there's this lady who called me last week. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was last week. And then she, she's 20, how old was she? She was 26. Yeah. 26, she has three kids and her family abandoned her 
So she was telling me that she's trying to look for a job. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, she feels like she wants to commit suicide and kill her babies. Wow, wow. Wow. I, yeah. it's, it's because of the pressure of yes. the, the, the kids. Yes. But at the end of 26, and three With kids. With three kids, yes. I think she got the first kid when she was a teenager. And so the family felt they needed to isolate themselves from her. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They chased her away from home. So she wow. has been on the streets begging, um, moving from house to house. You know, people sometimes host her, the, her relatives. But then okay. it has been so hard for her because mm -hmm. by the time, okay, when she called me, um, New Health uh, Medical Center had gone to Citizen Radio. Th that's where you work? Yes, that's okay. where I work. Mm -hmm. And we, we talked about what we do. We are a rehabilitation center mm -hmm. and we also um, deal with issues to do with mental health, mm -hmm. anything mental health, mm -hmm. depression, loss and grief, suicidal thoughts, all that. So that, that is where the lady got our number mm -hmm. from. Mm -hmm. She called me. Hey, and, okay, that one was, was a hard one for me. It was. Because now you, you don't know how to, wow, well, how to help. Because now this, this <coughs> it involves even other people. Yes. You're not just dealing with an individual. Yes. You're dealing with an indiv individual, the children and the family at large. Yes. Um, for a person who is in that kind of a position, because I'm sure there is someone who's watching. Yes. And they are in that position. And they have no clue on what to do. Yeah. What would be just that uh, piece of advice that you can give to them as a counsellor? Yeah. So, number one, the first thing I'd recommend that always works mm. is seeking professional help. Mm -hmm. In every government hospital nowadays, you'll find their counsellors or, or other just mental health professionals. Yeah. So... The minute you walk into a hospital, just tell the doctor that whatever you're dealing with, mm -hmm. it could be suicidal ideations mm -hmm. or depression. It could be you don't even know what is going on, but you feel you're not okay. Because mm -hmm. sometimes that is what people report. Mm -hmm. I just feel my life is a mess and I, I, I feel lost. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to do anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so just walk into a hospital, ask for a counselor. Talk to somebody. Talk to someone. Um, what, are, what are some of the things that um, always push someone into having suicidal thoughts because we are looking at unemployment yes. and uh, remember this is depression and unemployment specifically yes. unemployment yes. you know how, how how far can it go because every kenyan is looking for a job almost every kenyan yes but not all almost every kenyan is looking for a job but what differentiates one person from another to the point that mm. two people who graduated on the same year yeah are having different mindsets mm. one wants to commit suicide and another is still trying to get yes. uh, you know, to, to, to make those applications what mm. what triggers these thoughts of suicide okay the first thing uh, i know triggers everyone mm. is underlying issues mm -hmm. if you have issues that happened in the past and you haven't dealt with them they will always present themselves in the future always so um, these issues that you're talking about now come in and are triggered by unemployment? They can be triggered by unemployment huh. if they are related. Say, huh. um, in the past, maybe you've been rejected. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And then, right now, you're trying to look for a job. And then you get rejected. You get rejected. So you'll start feeling you're not worthy, uh -huh. you're helpless, you're hopeless, you're sad all the time. All those things start bombarding your mind. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so you start feeling like... <laughs> okay, the employment acts as a precipitating factor wow. or something that triggers whatever has been underlying. So how, how, how does someone separate these two issues? What mm -hmm. happened to me in the past and what is happening to me right now? Is there a way mm -hmm. that you can be able to separate these emotions? Or is it how hard can it be? Um, okay, it's hard. Mm. It's hard because most people, honestly speaking, most people are not self-aware. Most people, um, they don't have the emotional intelligence to actually acknowledge that this is how I'm feeling mm -hmm. and this is what I need to do about it. Mm -hmm. Most people will just feel and then they will 
you know <laughs> as in they they don't even know what to do with their emotions they cover it up they cover it up and it is quite interesting what you're saying maureen um mm. being self-aware yeah. is actually a step towards recovery yes uh, I've, I've had so many conversations on depression and um, it was, I, I don't know if it is two weeks ago, mm -hmm. we, were talking, we, were, we were looking into uh, uh, suicide awareness, it was Su 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 suicide awareness day and uh, mm -hmm. I was having this particular conversation with someone and then they were saying that uh, being self-aware is actually what can separate you from having suicidal thoughts because you know what triggers you, yes. you know what affects you. Yes. Um, how, how how then can someone you know pro, uh, uh, improve their sense of um, comfortability mm. their sense of uh, awareness how does someone you, you know mm. Mm. because you will get rejected so many times yes so many you, times you will go to apply in so many institutions and some will even uh, throw your cv mm. out in front of you you know before yes. your eyes don <laughs> Or you are nothing. Yes. How, how do you? What sh should someone do to you know to have that um, hard skin? Because in life, of course, mm. life can throw you a curveball. Yeah, and unfortunately, you, there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, you can't control. <laughs> you can't and control. If you can't control how people <laughs> treat you. <laughs> you can. Huh? What, what What do you do? So um, normally, self awareness is divided into three. Uh, concepts mm -hmm. and the first thing about self-awareness <coughs> is accepting your self-image uh -huh. or the way you see yourself yeah. you must first of all accept your physical self mm -hmm. love yourself love yourself mm -hmm. uh, acknowledge that you exist you're okay the way you are mm -hmm. because sometimes you might find someone whom people think they are beautiful they're handsome, they, mm. they look good, but for them, they always feel, uh, apana. I'm not I'm enough. Not, I'm, not, I'm not good enough. Yeah, I'm not good enough. Uh, and that's why, <laughs> it was last week that uh, we were having this conversation about uh, some, so some ladies who go for medically induced, uh, you <laughs> know, <laughs> body parts. <Yeah. laughs> you feel you're not good enough and uh, you get, uh, but you're looking for a job as a secretary. <laughs> and there they want someone who looks in a particular way or as a model yeah. they want someone who looks in a particular way and uh, it affects your self-esteem yes of course it will mm. because okay self-esteem is the other concept of self-awareness and oh, self-esteem okay. mm -hmm. is the value that you place on yourself mm -hmm. and it doesn't depend on material possessions it mm. doesn't depend on the family where you come from mm -hmm. or the type of job you have. Yeah. It's something that comes naturally. Mm -hmm. There oh. are people who are begging in the streets mm -hmm. and they have very high self-esteem. Mm. Ah. Yes. There is a lawyer or, I don't know, a big person somewhere who and doesn't have self-esteem. No self-esteem. So yes. self-esteem isn't about class? No. Or no. It's about an individual? Yes. Wow. I want us to take a short break. Okay. After this, we'll be back. Um, but after this, when you're coming, uh, we, I, I want you to tell us um, what do we need to do in order to reduce the rate of depression, mm. especially among the youth? Is there a solution? Is it possible? Yeah. We are seeing so many youths kill each other. Because yeah. you, 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 you've stressed me up. And because of un unemployment, they can't pay rent. They can't get school fees, they can't p get food, mm. and they are suffering outside here. And mm. some end up becoming thieves, and they are youths. Where's your yeah. neighbor? What do we do? Keep the conversation going on the hashtag Why in the Morning at Ram Maguka and at Y254 channel. We're taking a short break. We'll be back in a bit. This is Why in the Morning. Why two five four? Imagine.